learning the art of self-love is one of the hottest topics in mental health today. But is it biblical? You weren't created to do life alone. You weren't created to do life alone because you were created to do life with God. God is actually called love himself. I don't know if you've ever had so much love on the inside of you. The other day, I was just spending time with the Lord. I was worshiping. I had praise and worship music on. I was meditating on his promises concerning a situation that honestly could have really brought some depression in. But instead, I'm meditating. I'm thinking of his promises. I'm thinking of his goodness. And the love of God just wells up on the inside of me so strongly. I just grab myself and give myself a big hug. But this was not self-love. This was a physical reaction to love himself. Love on the inside of me was so strong by the Holy Spirit that I literally felt like this body was in the way of me getting to him. The love of God. The Bible says the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts through the working of of the Holy Spirit. So it's interesting as I was hugging myself and then the thought came to me about self-love. There are so many people right now focused on how you can love yourself better. And yes, the Bible does say love your neighbor as yourself. So loving yourself is important. But what you have to know is in that scripture, the Bible actually tells us, matter of fact, Jesus tells us, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Okay. Do you realize what's first? Before you can love your neighbor as yourself, you have to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Mind the will and the emotions. We're three parts. It's almost like if you picture... A dartboard. You've got the outside, the inside, and the very, very core. The core is your spirit. When you are saved, that is filled with the spirit of God. Then you have your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions, or as I like to say, your thinker, your wanter, your feeler. And then you have your body. That's this part right here. That's your flesh. That's this is the part that if you died today, your spirit and your soul steps out of you. This is left here. The soul of a person is just that. This is what it does. The function of the soul, it thinks, it feels, and it wants. But it doesn't produce any of those things on its own. It actually gathers that information of what it wants and how it feels and how it thinks about it from an outside source. Most people, the natural way is it gathers that information from the flesh from the body, from what you see around you. I think about history, the things that they thought were beautiful versus today. Uh, I remember my dad seeing pictures of him in his bell bottoms in the 70s and thinking, I would never wear that. Who would want to look like that? Well, I'm guilty now. I love bell bottoms. But we get our wants, how we think about things, what we desire, and how we feel about them from what we see, this external, but that's not how we were created. We were created to have that soul part of us right here that pulls information either from the spirit or from the flesh. You can pull and get your desires, how you think about things, this biblical worldview that people have when they study the word of God, the desires for the things of God. They think about, they think the way that God starts thinking. They want what God wants and they start feeling the way that's not subject to the world. The Bible says that he would give you peace that surpasses understanding. That means you can have a feeling, a sense, a mindset of peace separate from what makes sense that you're seeing out of this world. You get to decide, are you going to draw the information to feed your soul from your spirit and the spirit of God on the inside of you or from your flesh? So let's look at this self-love. Self-love by definition means love of self. You are literally trying to love on yourself. And I will tell you, this is actually biblical, but maybe not in the way that you think. 
In 2 Timothy 3, 1, it says, but understand this, that in the last days, there will come times of difficulty. Can we say we're there? For people will be lovers of self. There you go. See, self-love is actually biblical, but it's not in the to-do part of the Bible. It's in the warning of this is a sign of the last days. This is a sign of great trouble and difficulty. People will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, obsessive, um, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderers without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God having the appearance of godliness, but denying the power. Avoid such people. So right here, you have the world pushing self-love, self-love. You've got to love yourself more. This is how you love yourself. And some of the definitions, some of the phrasing that's used with the self-love, as I was looking at, it says, learn how to listen to your body. Accept yourself fully. Self-kindness means no judgment of yourself. Listen, this is straight out of the what not to do handbook. This is straight out of the don't do this. Listen to your body. No, that means they're wanting you to gather the information, your soul's information of how to think, how to feel, and what to want based on your body, based on this exterior part, the world, because that's the part that can be influenced by darkness. But God says to be influenced by the spirit of God. The word of God says in Romans 12 to be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might prove what is God's good and perfect and acceptable will. That mind is the soul part of you to be transformed, to be renewed, not by listening to your body, but by listening to the word of God, listening to the spirit of God on the inside of you. And what about this? self-kindness. Now, yes, you got to be kind. You need to start thinking good thoughts about yourself, but nobody's thoughts about you are better than God's thoughts about you. No one's. You start thinking what God thinks about you. Now you have the good thoughts. You have the feel good, but you got the power to bring that about in your life where you don't have that just in good thinking. Kindness towards self. Don't judge yourself. Just accept yourself the way you are is terrible demonic advice friends the bible says to judge yourself lest you be judged why because if you will judge yourself and we judge ourselves according to the word of god and we find that no this is not pleasing to god selfishness is not pleasing to god hate is not pleasing to god unforgiveness is not pleasing to god lust is not pleasing to god as you start examining yourself and judging yourself that brings the opportunity for change and transformation. You can't love yourself into freedom, separate from the freedom that comes from the truth of knowing God's word. You can't love yourself into peace. You have a whole society out there that's trying to push love, love, acceptance. But friends, there's not enough love. There is not enough acceptance of sin that can silence the conviction of your own soul. Deep down, know what is wrong. You can't love yourself out of it. But when you have love himself on the inside of you, love himself. I'm not drawing from my own love. When I just felt so overwhelmed with love on the inside, I just had to give myself a big hug. It wasn't my love on the inside. It was the love of God. It was love himself on the inside of me. I just wanted to get to him because God's not far off, far away, untouchable. He placed his spirit, the spirit of love, the spirit of power, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives and dwells on the inside of us through Jesus Christ. Glory to God. 1 John 4, 15 and 16. These are some of my favorite verses. It says, whoever confesses and acknowledges that Jesus is the son of God, God abides in him and he in God. That means abide, dwell in, live with. God lives in you and you live in God. 
verse 16, we have come to know by personal observation and experience, says the Amplified. We have come to know by personal experience. I can say this is true and have believed the love which God has for us. God is love and the one who abides in love abides in God and God abides continually in him. I have personal experience and I believe the love of God. This is what David had to say in Psalms 43, 5. It says, why are you cast down and depressed on my soul? And why are you disquainted, discouraged and discontent within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him. The help of my countenance and my God means God is the help when he is speaking to his soul and he is redirecting his soul from grabbing information from this physical realm. He's redirecting his soul, his mind, his will, his emotions that specifically the part of us is in charge of thinking and feeling and wanting. He is redirecting and saying, "Uh, uh, uh. why are you gathering information externally? Why are you gathering it from the flesh and from the situations and from the, from the circumstances that you're facing? Soul, I want you to turn. I want you to turn towards the spirit, towards the spirit of God and draw your information. This is where he says, hope in God, the help of my countenance, the countenance that changes the thinking, that changes the feeling, that changes the wanting. David is redirecting his soul. Quit looking out there. Quit just listening to your body. Quit listening to the circumstances and just saying, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. You know what? It's not going to be okay. There's some things that are not going to be okay without the help of God. But I can tell you anything can turn around with him. Anything. Nothing is too hard for God. Nothing is impossible with God. This is the difference between self-love that has no power. It holds within it deception and only creates more discouragement, more want, because you are not enough for yourself. But you turn away from that self-love and you turn into love himself. Love himself, that darling, is on the inside of you. So you can wrap your arms around yourself, but you're not just trying to give yourself a big hug. You are trying to reach the very spirit of God on the inside of you. I mean, you have the love of God well up so strong in you by the spirit of God, by meditating on his promises, on what he says about you, that he says that you are beautifully and fearfully, wonderfully made, that his plans for you are good, not of evil. These come to give you a future and a hope that no weapon formed against you shall prosper when you start thinking and meditating on the goodness of God and that he's right there on the inside of you oh the love of God starts swelling the love of God exactly what the word says the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts through the working of the Holy Spirit it starts bubbling over it starts filling up on the inside of you and that's how we can love others as ourself because we first have loved God with all of our heart with all of our mind with all of our soul we have taught our soul turn inward and draw your love from the spirit of God so that you overflow into the lives of others do not settle for self-love but receive the love of love himself this is how we do life with God Hit subscribe, share with a friend, and comment to build community. Join me on YouTube, Instagram, and your favorite podcast platform, How to Do Life with God.